Hey everybody, it's Adam coming to you once again from Full House Outfitters and today we're going to be talking about the uh, Lee Rifle Classic Loader. Uh, it's been around for uh, pretty much as long as there have been centerfire rifle cartridges and um, what this package allows you to do is, um, is hand load your uh, spent cases and, uh, and make your own loads without having to get into the activity to the tune of you know five or six hundred dollars or anything. Uh, 40 bucks for the tools and you're on the pro tour all you have to do is pick up your uh, your preferred powder and bullets provide your empty cases from the factory rounds that you already shot and you're good to go uh, at the outset I do want to point out that these Lee loaders are suitable only for lever action and bolt action guns not semi-autos for semi-auto you need another kit another type of press which uh, I'm going to profile next week but for the meantime Let's get into the Lee loader because um, this particular kit here is for uh, your standard 308 bolt gun. So you hunters out there, um, what this allows you to do, I like the Lee loaders a lot because it, it allows me to keep my ammo stocks topped off. So you know if I go for a workout at the range or I, I do go on a hunting trip and I'm a terrible hunter, um, at the very least I can come back with my brass and top it off and get back to the level that I'm used to being at. That's all. And uh, while some people say that uh, reloading saves you money, I, I'm sure it probably does. Uh, if you do it in volume, I don't. But um, uh, I just do it because, well, it's an interesting skill to have. That's all. It's just one more thing that uh, we know how to do and I think is important. Um, I don't reload pistol ammo. I don't reload my 223 ammo. I reload uh, my bolt gun ammo and my battle rifle ammo only. Um, I have friends who load everything, everything, every single centerfire cartridge that gets fired in any of their guns gets reloaded. That's great, you know, they're heavy duty hobbyists and I get it, but um, while this will save you maybe a teeny bit of money, the gains you get are in accuracy because uh, every gun has their own load, and I don't mean, you know, every model, I mean every individual rifle. Um, has recipes they like the best. Uh, the Lee Loader comes with all the tools you need, a very comprehensive instruction booklet where it says in there in no uncertain terms that don't try this with a semi-auto, it won't work. Well I'm here to tell you I tried it with a semi-auto and sure as hell it didn't work and that was my mistake but I figured I'd give it a try just to see what happened. Um, but like I said, for manually operated guns only, not semi-autos. Okay, um, this comes with everything you need here, oh, those are all your instructions. Um, and a little more uh, uh, 308 specs on the back, but the the real value is right here. This is the um, this is your load chart that specifies every brand of powder that's compatible with a 308 load and every bullet. And then in turn, it also gives you every uh, overall length for the cartridge, so you don't overpressurize it. Um, very cool. So all you got to do is pick a powder you like, pick a bullet you like, and go. And uh, as mentioned, this one little box contains everything you need. And the dipper itself is perfect for every load on that chart. So there's no guesswork, there's no powder, scales that you need, nothing. Literally, the only thing you need tool-wise beyond this is a regular household hammer. And, uh, and that's it. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, very first thing we need to do is, you'll see here I have a spent 308 case. Um, and I do this on this piece of poplar just so I don't dang up my desk. So uh, the very first thing we want to do is get the primer out of here. We do that um, by putting the, uh, the case in this decapping chamber. I'll put the package aside for now. Take our trusty hammer. And, and then you have the decapper right here, which is this little gadget with a pin on the end. Pin goes in and you give this just a tap or two. That's it. Done. Okay, and um, there's your spent primer, which we toss, okay, and uh, then what I normally do is um, I just clean out the primer pocket a little bit, just so, just so if there's any superfluous mung in there, you get rid of it. Okay, next thing we want to do is, um, is a combination of things. In one step, we're going to set the primer, and uh, but we're, before we do that, we're going to resize the neck. Now the reason I mentioned that this won't work on a semi-auto is because semi-autos require you to size the entire case 
not just the neck. Um, because semi-autos, what happens is the, the base of the case flares. Um, you can't see it. It's probably only about two thousandths of an inch, but that's enough to prevent it from feeding in the chamber of uh, at least my guns. Um, so anyway, to that end, it's, it's, it's a critical step that, um, that uh, these are only in uh, lever and bolt guns. Otherwise, you need a, a special die to resize the entire case. And like I said, I'll get into that next week. All right, so very first thing is you drop the case into the uh, resizer and just give this a tap. Okay, and then when that's flush with the, uh, with the die, um, you're halfway there. Okay, so now we have the neck resized. Okay, next order of business is this little gadget here, in addition to seating the bullets, also helps uh, seat the primer. So that's your primer cup right there. I have a Winchester large rifle primer, and that gets set there. And this whole assembly, you know, with the case already in it, goes down like this. All right, and we take the uh, primer rod out of our box, and that goes down through into the case, and a couple of smacks, and we uh, we set the primer. Now the primer should be flush, or maybe a little bit below the um, the bottom of the case. Now I can feel and see that it is not seated enough, so I'm just going to give it another tap here, another tap or two. Get that set down in there. Let's check it again. Nice and flush. That's perfect. Okay. All right now. We keep this whole set up here, but we take our priming rod out, okay? We don't need that anymore. Now, in here you have the uh, chamber for your powder. Now, the powder I'm using today is IMR 4064 powder. And I, after consulting my chart, this the suitable charge for this, you know, obviously this dipper, and consult my chart, and I want to use a 150 grain jacketed bullet. And I'll show you that in just a second. So for the meantime, um, I take a nice level scoop of powder here. Do not go over or under. All right, these things are calibrated this way for a reason. So, let me get a good scoop. I said, let me get a good scoop. All right, and then you level it off. I usually just wind up tapping it a little bit. I mean, you can use a credit card, whatever you want to use, but, all right, and once we get that, um, the dipper filled, okay, then the name of the game is just pouring ever so carefully pouring it in there without spilling it okay and then what I wind up doing is uh, I usually just um, you know tap the perimeter of this to make sure that all of the uh, little grains of uh, powder you know go where they're supposed to go okay and uh, so that gets filled up put my powder away and as mentioned, what I'm using is uh, Sierra Match King 150s. So pop one of these bad jacks out. And that just gets, uh, pretty much just gets set in there and just drops in. That's it. Okay, now the other piece here on the... Uh, that we want to use, sorry about this. I'm going to put that there, of course. And um, this is your little gadget. Granted, we use that to prime. This point also goes down, and this is what we set the bullet with. Okay? has a stop collar on here, and we already consulted our chart and realized the minimum length that we want to have for our finished cartridge is 2.8 inches. Okay? So I'm going to just drive this down. Okay? Now, I don't expect for one second this is going to be at 2.8 inches, but let's check. Okay, and it is. It's not even close because the bullet's still uh, wobbling here, so I know that. Okay, so in other words, what you want to do is then progressively move this collar down to where you want it to be. Now, this is this probably going to be a little bit of uh, trial and error here, but you're really better off taking your time and uh, doing this properly than... Um, you know, driving it down too deep and realize that your cartridge just doesn't work because it's not sized properly. Okay, so we tap this down again. Okay, and you can feel it bottom out like that. Not a big deal. Okay, so I'm going to take the cartridge out. Now I know it's not seated right. 
it's not seated deep enough, but I do want to, we're going to check it anyway. All right, so I grab my, uh, my handy dandy caliper here, okay, and this is not calibrated correctly, bear with me for one second here. So we're going to zero this, all right, and get down here, and let's see where this takes us. Now, right here, as you can see, you know, I'm at around 2.93, so that's not enough. So I know I have to uh, tap this down a little bit more. Not a problem. You go back to your uh, stop collar, all right, back it off just a teeny bit, okay, and knock this down maybe a tenth of an inch okay put this back on and like I said this is this is this is a chance for you to not make mistakes okay and I heard that bottom out all right so now we'll check it again and we are at 2.79, close enough to 82.8 that I can live with that. Okay. Now that's it. You've just seen the whole thing beginning to end. New primer, old primer out, primer pocket cleaned, primed, uh, charged, and bullet seated properly, and the cartridge resized. Now normally when we, we do this kind of thing, you know, you have uh, probably 50 cases or 40 or 30 or whatever. And you do it in production fashion. You deprime them all at once. You resize them all at once. You do everything all at once. And this actually goes very, very quickly. Um, but like I said, what this allows you to do is uh, keep your ammo stocks topped off. And it doesn't cost very much money to get into it. And because it's an entry level sort of kit, I, I hesitate to use the word entry level because um, there are guys out there um, who've been using this exact rig and nothing more fancy for decades you know, hunters that have had exceptional, exceptional luck with it. But what it allows you to do is try it and see if you like it. And if you do like it and you find your accuracy of your gun improving and maybe you're even uh, saving yourself a couple of bucks and you want to get deeper into the hobby and spend some more money, great. But this is a great way to get started. Uh, I highly recommend it um, for anybody with uh, manually operated rifles. Try it out, see what you think. And uh, maybe like me, you'll be hooked and want to move on to other things. So, uh, like I said, stay tuned for my battle rifle video, which is going to be another Lee rig. It's called a Lee Breech Lock Hand Press that I'll be profiling next week. And I'll show you how to load all your battle rifle stuff. Alrighty. Uh, that's it from here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the range.